This is the World Innovators Podcast with your host, Donna Peterson. I am so happy today. I am talking with my friend, Tina Silver. Tina and I met about five years ago up at the Inbound Marketing Conference that HubSpot puts on in Boston. It was a beautiful fall day, and they had one of those food trucks. They had all the food trucks lined out in this lawn, and then you had to find a place to sit. Lucky for me, I sat down next to this lovely woman, and we started talking about marketing. But what has held our relationship over the years is our both have that strong understanding about how marketing needs to be authentic and that you really need to care about what you're saying and the people you're trying to connect with. So, Tina, so wonderful to have you here today. Uh, Thank you for inviting me, Donna. I'm really excited to be here. And I cherish those memories of Boston at Inbound Conference. It was uh, the real highlight for me to end up sitting next to you and catching up and building this relationship authentically. Yeah, (laughs) it is. It is kind of funny how you build relationships over the years and where you are, you know, You know, you and I were sitting on a bench next to each other. And then I I met one woman on a subway, believe it or not, in New York City on the way to a conference. So it just it's incredible. The opportunities if you're if you're there and aware and you actually got your head out of your away from your phone and the world for a little bit, because that's the temptation these days, I think not to network as much as we should do. Um, I'm very guilty of that. And uh, it's it's relationships like we have remind me how important it is to lift your head and meet you know that is something I've just started to really grasp I guess it's probably before we met but I was always I would go to conferences I would attend the sessions I would quickly grab a lunch then I would go and quickly check work and I'd be on work and then it clicked in my head you're missing all those networking possibilities and maybe you don't sit next to someone like yourself and I where we build a relationship but you look around, you can look at people, how they interact, how they talk, what they're talking about. And it's- yeah, dive in on a conversation because, you know, there, there's people either side of you. I met a, a wonderful lady and her husband at a conference in, where was I, California, a few yeah. years ago. And it has led to, it was a throwaway comment um, sitting next to each other. And we were not in the same business fields at all, mm-hmm. but we have made a connection. And she's now been out with her husband and done articles for us she's done some some great um, content for us for our business and it's an ongoing relationship which we've made work and it was literally we could have sat there and just enjoyed the talk and and you know raised a hand and asked a question of the presenter but there you know we chose to introduce ourselves and see how we could help each other Mm. It's amazing it's amazing so how did you get started in this I know you're a digital social media consultant. How did you get into marketing? And why don't you give a brief intro on how you're helping the companies you are right now? Okay, well, probably the easiest way of explaining it is curiosity and frustration. So uh, (laughs) we have, I'm very detail orientated. I like, if I'm gonna do something, I want to do it well. If our companies are doing something, I want it to be done well. Um, and the two main ones that we we have are a hotel in the south of France so it sounds very glamorous and normally in normal years it is (laughs) oh trust me I've looked at the website and it is glamorous (laughs) (laughs) it it is something I on those hard days I'll quickly like see one of your posts and I'm like yes that is what I'm working (laughs) towards so we'll we'll be ready and waiting for you well it was more for for the hotel and also for our health club and gym um that there were things that needed updating on the website there were functionalities we weren't using that I was curious about and did some research and found a passion for and most of it was marketing based um and then finding that the answers to the questions were taking too long um from the, the suppliers who we had at the time um, and deciding that maybe I should learn a bit more and save us some money and focus our attentions more forward facing, if you like, and uh, customer facing. Um, so we just developed it from there. Um, I was very critical of the hotel social media, <laughs> mainly for uh, its 
haphazardness sometimes and the errors in its spelling in English and the majority oh, of that time. Goodness gracious, yes. Language. Um, and so I would, once I'd see it out there, I, I'd then message and criticize, and I'm sorry, this is, this is not good, to the point that the hotel director just said, listen, <laughs> driving me mad, why don't you do it? I was like, oh, okay, fine, let me do it. Um, mm. And yeah, now the criticism's the other side, occasionally make a mistake on the front side, so he, he lets me know. Um, yeah. But uh, me and my team have, have learned an awful lot and now um, we, do, we do better. And uh, yes. we are, yeah, we create the content and we talk to the people. Our other companies are the Gym Health Club in England. So different country, different rules, different wow. um, audience. Um, who we have to speak to in a completely different way. It's uh, it's not the same product as as everybody in marketing knows. You need to have a voice for each business yeah. um, and speak the right language, not just whether we're speaking English or French, but whether you're talking to somebody in their late teens or right. a, a recently retired person in their 50s or 60s or beyond, um, you have to find your voice. So this is... This is I love it. Oh, I, yeah. I am passionate about it um, and still have that passion today. Well, that's great. Yeah, because I would imagine with the different entities, you definitely have different type of branding. And oh, yeah. yeah, and the branding, you know, the people, it's funny, I'll sit down with a lot of clients and they'll say, oh, well, how many leads did we get? You know, that's all they'll worry about. And they won't. And I said, well, this is how many leads you got. But think about all this branding. And they're like, I don't want to hear about branding. And I'm like, oh, that's you're being short sighted when you do yeah, that. And I would agree. Yeah, because the branding is what builds the trust. Yes. And these people, are your brand speaks to certain people. And so long as you deliver on your branding and it, your product lives up to your branding, your marketing, um, your sales efforts, then these people who first come across you due to your branding and marketing efforts will become your um, your biggest fans, your advocates. Yes. They will, and they will tell their friends. And that doesn't really matter in my experience, whether we're talking about a hotel guest, a restaurant guest, um, a day spa client, uh, a gym member who's paying uh, relatively low cost, uh, coming in, working out three times a week, um, or some of our other clients are in the financial field and it's about investment opportunities and you know it's, they're completely different but you yes. need to know you need to understand your core values yeah. and once you've got that be consistent and uh, then your, your clients are not disappointed in what you're you're talking about showing them and ultimately selling to them yes well i see you're doing a lot with video <laughs> and, and we, made and a, <laughs> we made a conscious choice uh, to kind of get on the the video bandwagon if you like a few years ago and Excellent. we now uh, well for a number of years we rarely put out anything that is a static image it will either be a video live video or an animation or you know um, a, a film that's made up of stills but it's made into a video for the for the different uh, platforms and websites and 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 everything else um, it's a wonderful medium especially now when everyone's used to watching Netflix series yeah. one after the other <laughs> just one more episode one more episode yeah. so people that don't want to read tons of texts or huge articles or anything like that they can see it they you're telling the story still you're being persuasive hopefully um, but it doesn't feel quite so salesy. We haven't yes. got um, buy now, buy now, buy now things coming up on the screen. Obviously, that's the ultimate aim. Yeah. But we do work on making sure that we have different content, different videos, um, speaking to the different personas, the different audiences for for each category. So, um, and each business. I, I've watched them and as you know, I, I love them. And I've even incorporated videos, even for like LinkedIn connections, or mm -hmm. even a person who doesn't know me very well, I just find doing a little video where they see me, they, they, I'm talking to them because I'll yeah. mention their name. So it's directed directly at them versus, you know, people throwing out that generic messaging 
Absolutely. And isn't I'm, going I'm, to work at all anymore. No, you know? it isn't. And I'm all for automating a lot of processes and sending out a follow up email. And uh, when somebody's filled in one of your forms on your website yep. or an inquiry, even on, on, on Facebook or Instagram. But like you say, with video in particular, you can very quickly create a, a 30 second clip. Yeah. Just you to them. Yeah. Hi, Don. Thank you so much for asking that question. Unfortunately, we don't have a swimming pool anymore at the gym. Yeah. We doubled the size of our equipment. Now in there, we have this, this and this. We'd love to show you out. Yes. Give me a shout back whenever you're available and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a tour of the gym and send that just to you. I'm not going to be able to use it to anyone else. Because yes. I've said your name, as you've, as you've mentioned, it's personalized. It's very, it's quick. Yeah. Um, it's immediate. And yeah. I think you can almost say, like, uh, just listening to what you just said, you can say more in a shorter period of time than if you try to write it out. And then no one is going to read this lengthy. No. And I, I don't know if you're like me. I'm not a big writer. I'm definitely a good talker. Oh, well, same here. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop talking. But <laughs> so I, I, I can do writing. these like interviews. I love them, you know, but even just doing a quick video, I can get them done quicker than if I sat down to try to do a letter or try okay. to do something. Because the whole time I'm writing, I'm trying to say, will it be responsive? Hmm. Well, you want a reaction from it. At the end of the day, that's an interaction. You're, you're marketing to this highly connected person and they're a hot lead. If they've sent you a question if, and you can respond to them quickly and personally, uh, as you could with a video, like you just said, then they are way more likely to believe you, mm -hmm. listen to what they're saying and buy in. Uh, be that booking um, their, their lunch table, uh, buying a personal training yeah. session. It doesn't matter what your industry is. Um, and it's also, you, you'll, you'll hear from them, their, their personality, if you like. Yes. If, if, their, if their initial comment was quite in a reaction to one of your videos and it was a quite a jokey video, then you know that you can push that a little bit further. Yes. If it's more of a dear Mr. and Mrs. or dear Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so, when they reply to you, even on direct message, probably getting some uh, data information then about their um, their demographics uh, and how you need to then go dear Mr. so-and-so or Mrs. so-and-so on your video back that they are still using their phone they are still yeah. asking the question and you are still responding you've got way more chance of spending um, 30 seconds creating that very short video yeah. and answering them and getting them to connect with you and buy. well they see they see that you're a real person and, you know, hopefully when you talk and this is something I think you're great at, I want to want to go back to the videos, but just being able to get that feeling of being authentic that you want to help them. Yeah. And in well, your videos, I have found it interesting because you'll do informative, you'll do funny. And, you know, like from when Mark is, you showed Mark's favorite room to, you know, what you just did with the health club about reusing the cloth, but somehow you don't come across as selling. In a way, you're entertaining. <laughs> well, I, that's, that is what we're trying to, we are, that is the impression we're trying to give that we are not selling. We want yeah. people to buy into the experience if you're coming to our hotel it's a five-star luxury hotels five small luxury hotels of the world we have a michelin star restaurant so don't get me wrong we are we are very serious about what we do but we're real people it's family owned it's family run um it's a, a small team who are very committed and have lots of them have been there for years and years so you need to know that about them. The risk for me is the content creator side on the marketing, getting these stories out there is when I have to interview Mark, my husband, <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun and I get great returns on it as so therefore the company does too, but it's risky. He's a, he's a, a character in himself <laughs> and he will always put a couple of the, the risky bit is at the end when you say thank you as the interviewer and you know he's going to say something back and it will be slightly <laughs> sarcastic because I'm his wife and but we don't edit it out we don't because that is the reality we are the husband and wife we represent the family at the hotel and 
what you see is what you get at that point. But that's so, but that's part of your brand. It is. Absolutely. You know, you don't want to be so um, strict in guidelines and proper that you sound like a Marriott or a Hilton. You know, you want to show that you yeah. are a more a boutique, but you're a luxury brand, but you're approachable. Yeah. Oh, Which, totally. And, and, you know, Mark, he, he does most of the sales trips to, to the high end uh, travel agencies over in the US and in, in the UK and Switzerland, and they get to know his personality and he is, he is the heart of it, along with his management team, they, they each have a similar freedom to be themselves, which mm -hmm. I think these days in, in the, it's what you should be doing. You need to, you need to, shout loud about your personality not so loud that you offend everybody but that you have to be able to be um authentic i'm sorry that yes. word is overused but not in this case yes, yes um this is who we're about and um what we're about and we will do our utmost to make sure you'll stay if, you, if you're coming to the hotel at your workout and your new routine at the gym with the team there all of our our team our employees, if you like, but yeah. they're their team, have um, the right to be as vocal about their passion. So if you're one of the chefs, if you're one of yeah. the waiters, the fracturier who parks your car, the personalities we have are phenomenal. They are our strengths. That's what comes through in our reviews um, and uh, exit questionnaires and things like that from for, after a guest has left. Um, so well, that's are, good like, because, what, yeah, because then you show the personality all the way through their visit. Yes, totally. You know, it's just not marking you through your social posting. It's from everything, like you said, when they drive up with their car, when they go to eat. They, when they, they often, they know the name of the Wajiri, especially if it's one of the main two. They're, they, they've they seen them on, on videos. They've seen them on films. They've, they've maybe read a blog post about getting to know one of our team and it will be them. People get out the car and they, and they say, you know, hi, Ludovic. Ah. Like, Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize this was, I thought, I didn't realize you were returning guests. I'm so sorry. And they go, no, first visit, we've just seen you online. Now uh, that means that they are invested in us as a business. So for our markets, my marketing side or the hotel's marketing side, I feel that's a success. Yeah. We then have to follow through, which 99 times out of 100, we do. So, so you got uh, your brand out there. You've built the trust. Yes. And now you have gotten your lead who now has converted into actually being a customer. Exactly. And then, yeah. then it's down to the more traditional marketing afterwards when we will um, we'll keep in touch with them on social media, of yeah. course, via our newsletters as well. Um, and direct messaging. Um, I, I get emails as a lovely um, couple. They've been to us numerous times They're in Louisiana. Um, mm -hmm. Had an email from them on Monday. Just a general update. I've heard from them twice already this year, how they're getting oh, on. Nice. Um, just how we, how's, how's, how's Moose? Moose is the hotel dog laying at my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep at the moment, <laughs> leaving sleeping dogs to lie at the moment. Um, asking how he is because they've seen him on Facebook or oh. Instagram or Twitter, whichever one of the, the channels that they're following. Um, they will be back. I know they will be back. Yeah. And they will be back due to the fact that we are interested in them and we you care deliver what they're looking for you we you care, care. So, yeah and, and you help them it's almost like you create a home away from home you know because the yes. people feel so familiar when they get there yeah you know? and, and, and then you the, keep the, the and you keep the vacation going exactly but it's then a case of um we have to learn we have to adjust and give them their distance once they're there yes yes <laughs> do the job of that they're bought in for and not kind of smother them with with love if you like so um, you, you mean they didn't want to spend the whole vacation with tina and mark <laughs> <laughs> tina mark and Moose, yes <laughs> that will send them all running absolutely yeah sense of humor very english so um so, but yeah so that those are the kind of things which i feel sorry going back to your original comment about video that allows us to have a personality which any other, you know, like I say, writing an email newsletter, there's some personalization in there, but it's not really um, as direct as you think it is. And video gets us past that. Well, I see what a lot of companies like to do with social media, just like anything, you know, they see they need to be out there doing it and they'll just start throwing stuff up there. 
-hmm. you know, they'll, they'll do like static posts, like you said, or they'll put a video or they'll do a questionnaire, but there's no real thought to it. And you don't get that authentic feel like you just look at it as another message and just like you said those replies like on LinkedIn for instance if you connect with someone and then they come back and they send you this lengthy thing you know it's a big sales letter and everything and it's like all you want to do is say you know no no I actually wish to I didn't accept you yeah that's yeah. how I feel about it I just feel now I'm being sold to and it's too brutal yeah um, I'm happy to make connections on LinkedIn and, and I do find LinkedIn is really useful. We obviously are um, a destination for, for boardroom breaks and uh, car launches and goodness knows what else. But so we're, we're out there personally as our own brands, but also as the hotel um, and the gym, but it's, it's subtlety. Yeah. <laughs> I think we I have to be a little bit more subtle about it. I agree. And that, that goes worldwide. You know, people always used to say, oh, no, in the U.S., they want it straight to the point. And, you know, overseas, they want to be a little more subtle. And I'm like, no, if, if we've learned anything, and then this is going to lead into our next question about what are the biggest marketing changes you've seen. But it is all about that empathy and caring. Mm. You know, it's well, not being hard totally. to the point. And, and I've got to say that, you know, we're having everything else I've previously said I'm going to now debunk because up until this last year or so you would have seen that Mark and I on videos me very rarely but occasionally and certainly you would have heard me interviewing people um guests as well as as team members but this last year we've had to, had to up our game um because we don't have I don't have dishes to share photographs of the of the hotel um well I do but they're all from the previous year um, well, because wait, we should explain to anyone who's listening. It's because you're closed right now due yes, to COVID. Right, yeah. So yes, due just COVID, because we have people all over the world and they're yeah, like, oh, why? Why don't you have dishes to share? Yeah, I know it's strange. A hotel and restaurant with no food. Um, the, the fact is COVID uh, is still in full flow at the moment. And therefore the hotel this year so far has been closed for nearly eight months since we were last open. Um, we Yes. And then last year in 2020, we managed to be open for about four months in total, which is wow. devastating yes. in yes. comparison to our normal 11 months. And actually, in, at the beginning of 2020, we decided to not even close for one month of the year. We would be open for 12 months. Little did we know that COVID was going <laughs> to a few months later. So that um, was different. But we don't so therefore we don't have the normal content that we would be able to put out. Um, images of people having a spa day, uh, interviews with, with clients. We can't do any of that. So it has forced us to get a little bit more personal than normal. So you are seeing more things of, of the dog, of uh, Mark, of Giuseppe, who's the general manager. Um, and we're still doing, we've got our staff all on furlough. I'm not sure wherever you are in the world, what your, <laughs> your situations are, but in, in France, it's like a furlough system. Um, so they're not here, um, but we've got gardening teams, maintenance teams. So uh, there's pictures of a guy up a ladder, these huge cypress trees. And uh, my son, who's doing some work there, he's power washing everything that he can possibly yeah. get. So there's pictures of him coming out in the next week because we have had to get more personal yeah. um, because there's, there's not a lot out there that else I can do I need to keep the businesses front and center as soon as people can start booking we want them to immediately think of us like you were saying every now and again you'll see our, our posts and don't pop over to the website and look at those pictures and yes. think one yeah. day yeah. um so we have to do that same with the gym the gym was likewise closed three times in the last year um we've just reopened last Monday um, and we continue to post we 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 can we have only a couple of channels for each business each business has a channel that that matches its audience yeah. we're not everywhere for everybody all the time we don't put the same content out on every channel at the same time I I, I'm, I cannot fathom why they think the same audience wants to see the same thing on a different channel if I'm on Twitter I'm looking for very short sharp bits yes. of information but if I'm on if I'm on Instagram, then I'm happy to scroll for hours and <laughs> yeah. um, with stories and everything that's new out there. Um, but 
I don't want to, if I've seen it once somewhere, I don't wish to see the same thing again. So, you know, we've had to adjust. On the same thing for that, for the hotel, we've, we've toned it down a little bit on how much we're, pro, uh, we're, we're putting out there, but it's just enough to keep us um, relevant without people thinking, oh my goodness, you're open, can we come? Yeah. And then, yeah. no. Right. So, um, but it's good because you are it's like what we talked about initially you're keeping the brand top of mind yes but you're yeah. and you're building that trust but then you're also doing it like with the health club i know i saw a video of how when you covid first hit what you were doing mm. to stay within covid guidelines absolutely so <laughs> the, the gym layout had to be changed social distancing there's at least two meters between every piece of kit or mm -hmm. piece of kit are marked out of use the cleaning protocols are extensive. The uh, temperature checks when you come in, all of these things had to be put in place, first of all, and then explained. So when we were able to open, that everyone knew what their, the expectations were of what they had to do and what we were doing. Um, and but as a person, as a person who attends the gym too, you've kind of put them at rest because they know what to expect when they get there. And yes. they know it is a safe environment where some people who don't post videos like that, they might lose some clientele because of those unanswered questions. Yes, exactly. And we're showing our team, again, it's, um, the, it's video based always. Um, so it's a team member who they know, the, the gym manager, yeah. one of the gym instructors, a personal trainer, they are coming in and they're walking through the systems, showing you what, what you will do as a member so that you're not surprised, you're not anxious about, but I won't know what to do. I'm yes. not sure how to, how to. So we're using our marketing to kind of ally fears before people arrive and want to sign up again and to also to encourage them to sign up again. Again, yeah. marketing for a purpose. We want our members to rejoin. Um, but I also think that also your videos are showing the personality, like you said, of the people in the gym. For instance, yeah, the one, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the one you just did yesterday, which to me brings in an environmental concern because you are cutting back by offering the microfiber cloths. You're cutting yeah. back on so much waste because yeah. during this whole COVID thing, my son's in college. Everything he got was plastic. His meals were in plastic, plastic bags, plastic bags. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, from an environmental standpoint, isn't there something we can do that's better? I know. And you think of that with the same thing with masks and, and everything else that you know, yeah. you can wash them, you can do this and you can do that. But at the end of the day, there's a whole new uh, wave of merchandise, if you like, or PPE that is going to go into landfill. And that's just oof. And yeah. we, for us at the gym, it was a case of we were, well, the two things business wise, it's huge cost for the, the paper towels, the yeah. blue paper towels. We'll say we went from <laughs> blue to turning more green. Um, so we decided this is not a sustainable thing. We are literally have huge bin bags, uh, trash bags. I can't remember how to explain it. I'm English and American sometimes. Yeah. Small garbage bags. bags. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, so they're, they're, everything's bagged up, it's secure, but it's huge and it's all going to go to waste. It's just terrible. So we have implemented this new system um we've got every every member when they come in we have this account now sean is phenomenal he's the gym manager there he has a it's called the lean green fighting machine and it's this big area where you have the bottles filled with the disinfectant and now they have these attachments with the, with um for your cloth to go on there you have your own one we give them to you uh, free of charge you get one for free if you want to buy anyone if you've left it behind then great buy us yeah um, but then you're, you're, you're using that before and after every, you use any piece of equipment. So right. we had to put that out there. And the t I said to the team, I'm going to need, I'm going to need images. I'm going to need videos. I need you to show it. Well, they far exceeded what I, what my yeah. brief, the videos were hysterical. I've only used a couple of them so far, yeah. um, but we haven't waited. We've, uh, we have a plan obviously for social media, what goes out when, um, and that's all just been pushed back so that we can get this out there quickly to get as many of the members um, relaxed about this new system. Uh, yes, it has, it has an impact on us financially. We, we have the yeah. cost of buying the cloths, obviously, but um, we'll be helping the planet. We'll be helping uh, 
the ease of use inside the gym and you know our members are so far reacting phenomenally well so uh, excellent excellent that's we're, we're reacting and yet again I can put it in a newsletter will they read it no well they might we write some quite funny newsletters but they, yeah yeah. At the same time, that the next time there's a newsletter going out, there will be a video link. The video will go up on YouTube. It will be embedded and they will be able to go and watch that whenever they like as to understanding even months down the line why we made that change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Is there a specific like social media strategy or cadence that you have seen work the best for you? Um I find it depends on which channel. So we're still experimenting a bit with the gym. We we are we've kind of faded off with Twitter. We're there on Twitter only for um, community management, if you like, and joining in uh, local conversations. Um, but we're not putting out the the uh, content that we used to because we weren't getting the interaction. We weren't yeah. getting the feed throughs on it. Whereas everybody else seems to be off for of the gym in Harrogate, is where it is, was uh, it's very much Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. So we are alternating. There's something every day, it's different every day, but it's one day this, one day that. Now that's bare minimum. And yeah. I think that's the least we could get away with. Um, I'm okay to increase it when we have special offers or reopening, but I can't, I won't put out regurgitated content that doesn't make any sense or it's got no purpose mm -hmm. so I would rather do it every other day on each channel well than put things out there that are just there for the sake of it we share local content from other from suppliers from other small businesses from charity um, initiatives that are going on in the we share them we'll put them on our feed we'll put them in our stories yeah. um, so that also pads it all out it's a lot of community management but it's worthwhile but um, I, I'm a strong believer of that sticking with quality, maybe not as often, you know, because I'll have clients say, well, how many times should I post on Facebook and how many times should I do LinkedIn and Twitter? And, and I'm like, really, let's not talk about that. Tell me what type of content you have yes. and what, who you're trying to reach, you yes. know, well, on it's, the it's down again to knowing your brand and knowing your yes. goal. If you've yes. got, if you've got four personas that you are, that are completely different, then you need to make sure you're hitting each of those four on a regular basis on the channel that matches them. But, but creating lots of, of content for, let's using the gym analogy, for the retiree in, um, new to the gym uh, at 65. Yes. Uh, rather than, and just aiming everything at that person, teen year old who's just left school, not gone off to, to college yet and or, you know, then and they won't even think of us. We won't know them. We're not on yeah. Snapchat, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a conscious decision on the fact that I'm not based in in the area, and I can't travel at the moment due to COVID restrictions. So I can't I can't generate the content myself. And the team are focused on doing their job, and then they have marketing as a an additional chore, if you like, every day that they have to send me things. I'm quite horrible. <laughs> no, but but see, I think that goes back to that authentic brand. And maybe that is why your social posts to me, you know, because I look at a lot of social posts and yours doesn't come across as kind of premeditated salesy. Yours comes across like, you know, when you were talking about something you're doing in the off time, I love the one where Mark picked his favorite room. And oh, then yeah. He went through, and it's funny because I told my husband, because he's also in our business of marketing, and I said, I mentioned the video, he goes, well, what is it that he liked about the room? And so I went and I described, well, he likes the front terrace because you can sit out that, and then as you walk through in the back, there's a big window of the mountains. And I talked about that a lot longer than I would have if I read something quickly. And to be honest, I wouldn't have read it because I'm not ready to come join you there. <laughs> so no, exactly. You would, if, you would, if you've decided to buy, you're further down the sales funnel and you're ready, honey, which kind of room do I like? Hang on a minute. Let me take a look at these things. But then we can feed, when we have clients asking that, we can just say, okay, here, here's that video. This is this is the room category we recommend you. Yes. You're not there yet, but it's it spiked your interest. So yeah. We've yeah. ticked that box there, but we're using that same piece of content later on further down for another person. So well, for me, if 
if I'm coming over from the States to a foreign country, I like kind of emerging myself into the country. Mm -hmm. I don't want to stay in those large hotels that won't give me the flavor of France, you know. That's one of the other things going on on the the cadence, if you like, of how we how often we we program our posts and what we and the content we create. It's also about um, making sure we're talking about the area we're in. It's not we have a whole date. It's called date hashtag day trip lmc it's the it's the internal hashtag we use and it's about the events be it the monaco grand prix this week it's the monaco oh it's the all the really old cars i can't remember what they call it how terrible is that um it's yeah so it's the old grand prix in may will be the real grand prix um with with 45 minutes away from monaco yeah so we will mention it but we're we're 15 minutes from Cannes we're less than an hour by car in, in the off season from Saint-Tropez or a fast ferry of 45 minutes from Cannes to Saint-Tropez. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the jazz festival. We'll talk about all these different things. The, the galleries, the restaurants in the village that are walking distance, five minute walk from the gates. So we're talking about- The whole vacation. Do. Yes. Yeah, it's not just where they're gonna stay. It's no, what no, they're gonna no. do even once they're there, you know? Yes. We have, we have friends who have a, an amazing hotel in the middle of France, um, and we have guests that stay with them on the way down. They, <sighs> on a driving holiday, they stay with them. They're with Relais Chateau, it's an amazing place. Um, and then they, they tell us when they're driving off, and um, we know they're gonna arrive here five hours later. And they Lovely. stay with us for a bit, they, they do stay around the area. And then on the way back, we give them a quick call and go, they're leaving, they're on the way to you, and off they go to them. We talk about hotels in Paris. Where, if we were in Paris, where would we go for, for dinner? Yeah. Where would we go for lunch? Not often, of course, we're going to try and pull people down to the South, but right. we're not blocking that out because we're not saying, if you, if you came over to stay with us, well, I know it will be fantastic, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's, it's the fact you want to experience France. We're in the South, it's yeah. the French Riviera. You, you need to drive on this particular road. You need to go and soak up that view. You must get the ferry across the islands in the Bay of Cannes. It's, it's like a secret world, it's amazing. But you wouldn't know about it if we didn't mention it occasionally. No, you're a personalized concierge service that it's really, like I said, not just the place where you're gonna stay, but the whole vacation. Which and it sounds like- that, Yeah, it's, it's storytelling. It's kind yes. of telling the, the whole- Experience, the whole-, the whole Yeah, and, and does that matter if, it, if you're in um, banking, if you're in, I don't know, selling lampshades or, or blankets, you're selling the, what the room will look like at the end, not, not just the item that's in your shopping basket. And, and that's, that's why that's why you're so good at it, you know, because you are <laughs> you are well it is because you know, I don't know, you said you fell kind of into this position, but might that might have been a good thing because sometimes oh, yeah. I think people who maybe go to college and say, okay, this is what I'm gonna learn, and what mm-hmm. they teach in school will be okay, you get the spreadsheet, you work out the post and do something here, here, and here. And it's like, come on, let it flow a little bit, let it go. Yeah. I, but then I think that's also age. I'm not young. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm with you. So, so what is your what is your biggest marketing challenge? Would you say right now? Um. Well, two things. One that's very specific to this new world that we're currently living in is the fact that, as we said before, keeping front and center of uh, the brands that I yeah. represent while the access is so restricted yeah. that is that is completely unusual and I hope is going to pass in the next yeah. uh, few months um and the rest of the time for me I would say it's it's content it, mm-hmm. it's having the 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 members of our team that are happy to to take themselves less seriously and get in front of the camera or give me a quote or let me take a picture of them that I'll animate later and that doesn't matter whether it's for um, my client in New York or uh, my one in London or our businesses for the gym yes. um, and the dance teachers and, and the external people that, that pay us rent to use our facilities. I still need them to give me content so that I can promote them. So for the gym yeah. is the equivalent of the going on a day trip to Nice. 
would be one of the external personal trainers or the yoga teacher. I want yeah. her classes to be full because yes. then our members will be happy. Yes. Um, but if she doesn't give me anything, then I, I find as a marketer, it's frustrating. I don't want stock images. I don't want that awful scenario where you put something up and by just bad luck and bad timing, a competitor puts something up that's very similar at the same time because you grabbed it off a stock site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Won't. Well, you're keeping it all personal. And I think that, like we've said, just is your brand. You yeah. know, that, that is how you get to stand out and from I think the others. Any, any company, whichever brand of marketing you're in, if you actually spend the time getting to know what they're about, like you said, right at the start with knowing what their, their image is, what their goals are, what they actually deliver. If, you, if whoever's doing your marketing for you spends the time to get to know you yeah. and the brand itself knows who they are, and it just could be another issue, um, then your stories and your marketing becomes, I think, and I found to be way more authentic and you get the results, but it's, you yeah. need to do work at the start. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot of time doing the research. And I know some companies don't want to do that. You know, they just want to go and they want to get the leads, but if they're not quality leads, there's no point no, in doing it. So yeah. I do think you're doing a wonderful job and I don't want to hold you very long. I think I've already held you quite long. But I have to end with my last great question. You know, marketing is evolving so fast. And I'm a strong believer that our health and fitness is important. So just like your marketing has to be slow and consistent, I think health and fitness has to be slow and consistent. So sure. what does Tina do to stay energized and innovative? Uh, well, you may have heard me mention Moose the dog who's laying there looking even more lazy than I am at the moment but he's a Bernie's Mountain dog he has his own Instagram account he needs a walk every day so my target is to get out at least once a day with him um it's usually Mark and I we, we, we live right by a forest so we, we're out there walking him on your own or, or or with Mark or our son or anyone who's if when we're allowed visitors again it gives you a moment to breathe we're yeah. in nature we're we are breathing fresh clean air we're very yeah. lucky to live in this part of the world it grounds you it's something yeah. you haven't got time for but you can't you can't afford not to be doing yeah. and I, I, I love tennis um i haven't played for a, way too long hopefully we'll be able to get back to that soon um i'm not much of one for attending classes and I certainly yeah. don't work out in a gym which is a, a bone of contention with my team in the UK that I don't know the names of all the equipment and I certainly couldn't use most of it without keeling over quite likely but it's that for me it's fresh air getting outside seeing the horizon um, and just appreciating everything around you when you come back in for me it's I, I, I love coming to my, my office isn't at home um, it's you can't see most of it but it's it's got a fresh flowers. I love fresh flowers. Yeah. I look straight out into the forest. It's, it's an amazing view. I've pictures of my friends and family around me. I have my neon um, diffuser pod for essential oils going in the background. I change the oil to keep my, my, myself upbeat um, when I've got a, lot of a big project on. You have I to think we, we must be a like sisters from another mother or something because, <laughs> you know I just I, I agree with you that walking outside and looking at birds and trees when it helps put life in perspective if you're dealing with a negative thing you kind of look around and I'll look at a tree and think you know how long have you been standing there you've been standing there for years and this issue that I'm having a problem is going to be gone and yeah. and also I find that if I go out Sometimes when I come back, I'm able to think clear. So what was an issue? Absolutely. You sit down and you're able to fix it within minutes and you're saying to yourself, how did that just happen? <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it happens because you've, you've let your, your mind go into neutral while, and, and think of other things and our subconscious will, will sort it out for us. And I think having the belief in that is wonderful, but having the ability to take five minutes, a half an hour, two hour hike, whatever you can fit in, just do it as often as you can. And for, for us, because we have the dog, it's a, a daily requirement. So and I'm, I'm yeah. eternally grateful for it. Oh, so. excellent. Well, Tina, like I said, I don't want to hold you much longer. I've enjoyed this conversation. I think 
you and I could talk forever because you have <laughs> such great insight. But I want to thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. I'm very grateful for this opportunity and uh, thank every day that we got to meet in Boston and uh, we chose to sit down at the same same place. Um, yes. At that conference. It's, it's been wonderful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the World Innovators Podcast. For more information about today's topic, email us at dpeterson at worldinnovators.com or call 860-210-8088. And please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future episode.